Corn snakes are, without a shadow of a doubt, one of, if not the most popular pet snakes the world over. However, this doesn't mean that they don't still have wild counterparts and that they have a natural history. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is talking about the natural history of these awesome snakes, as well as talking about the taxonomy and nomenclature, and giving an overview of the species and what it means to be a corn snake. So let's get straight into it. Given a taxonomic overview of this apparently very curious species, we have that it belongs to the domain Eukaryota, which is all of the organisms that have DNA um, tightly bound within a defined nucleus. Then it belongs to the kingdom My Sleeve. Um, <laughs> then it belongs to the kingdom Animalia, which is the animals. The phylum Chordata, which includes the vertebrates. Um, then the class Reptilia, which is the reptiles. The order Squamata, which is the squamates, which are snakes and lizards. The suborder then after that is of course Serpentes, the snakes. The family it belongs to is Colubridae, the colubrids. The subfamily Colubrinae. Um, the genus Pantherophis. And of course the specific name is Gotartus. So that gives us that the scientific name of the corn snake is Pantherophis gotatus. Now Pantherophis, the etymology of the word, so where it comes from, is the first part, panther, literally just means panther, so basically leopard, um, and then ophis comes from snake, so in fear of snakes is called ophidiophobia, the ophi part refers to snakes, and so basically the genus that this, this snake belongs to, Pantherophis, means leopard snake. Apparently that name come from the fact that the wild patination of the corn snake looks somewhat reminiscent to a panther, but personally I don't really see the link. Moving away from words that nobody likes to try and pronounce, we do start talking about the vernacular or common names of this snake, the names that it's given in everyday parlance. Now obviously corn snake is the most common name, However, corn snake doesn't necessarily refer to this species only. It can actually refer to a number of similar species that aren't necessarily very closely related to it. For example, the Chinese leopard snake or twin spot rat snake is also known as the Chinese corn snake, even though it's not a particularly close relative of what we call the corn snake. Now because of this I prefer to just use the name corn snake for this animal and use alternative names for the others because otherwise it does just get confusing. And if anyone's wondering where the name corn snake actually comes from, it might actually be because, be because of two reasons or they might both be correct. Um, the first being, as you can see, the pattern on the underbelly does look kind of like dried corn or maize or whatever, um, so that could be the sole like site of where the name came from. And then they also are frequently found in cornfields hunting the mice that live there and so on. Um, so there are a couple of reasons why they have that name. Most people who are into reptiles probably don't need a description of the corn snake because they already know what it's going to look like. But if you're not too familiar with this species, I am like I'm going to do in all of these videos, give a general description of them so you know what to look for. The corn snake is a pretty average sized rat snake. Um, the largest individuals approach 6 feet long or 180 centimetres. Now that does sound very big on paper, but it really isn't. Red, who is about an average sized corn snake, um, and is trying to go down my top again. Um, he's about 150 centimetres long, so approximately 5 feet long, and that's about the average of what you're going to see. Now if I can get him to come a little bit closer to the camera, you can see that he has got round pupils. Some people do tell you that this means that a snake is non-venomous, but that is not strictly the case and is not a good rule to go by. Um, and other people will say that snakes with um, purely like circular pupils are always diurnal, so awake in the day, but that's not true either, it's just sort of an interesting feature of them. A little interesting side note about venom, which is the kind of thing that really interests me, and I hope it will interest you too. 
um, is that the North American colubrid snakes are believed to have had a relatively decent ancestor that was actually venomous. However, after they evolved the ability to constrict their prey, they actually lost the ability to produce venom. Um, probably this is because constricting is like less wasteful for the snake, so if it's using its venom, it's going to be more biologically costly than just killing its prey by strangling it. Of course, this does beg the question why other venomous snakes have evolved venom in the first place and also why they don't actually like turn to constricting, but that isn't how evolution works and I'll probably get to that in another video. Okay, we've gone freehand on Red now because he's just decided that my collar is much more of an attractive thing to hang on to than my hands. Anyway, looking at the features again of a corn snake, um, in the wild, they do have a sort of typically orangish ba orange base colour, ranging from yellow through to brown and even grey in some instances, but there are various wild localities. For example, the Miami, the Carolina, um, the Alabama and the Okiti are all sort of wild phases. In captivity, we do of course have many different colour morphs, um, and I have made a video about this in the past, so if you want to see some of those, then I'll chuck a link up to it for you now. Another interesting fact about this snake is that it does have the sort of repeated pattern of darker red saddles down its back, um, and obviously with the lighter saddles or the lighter patches going in between. Some people have like hypothesised that this is because the corn snake is evolving to more closely resemble the coral snake, the coral snake being a venomous snake native to the Americas, and so in looking like that, um, it's like the predators of this snake will recognise it as being a coral snake and therefore leave it alone because they don't want to get bitten. Whether this is actually the case or not, I can't really tell you and I don't have very much information about it, but if you're looking for something to do, look it up and tell me what you find down in the comments. So the corn snake is found in the wild right the way across the southeastern United States and over there it is found in, an, in a really wide range of habitats. So it will go in woodland areas, grassland areas, um, inland wetlands, so nothing with salt water. Um, it will take dry caves, it will go in palmetto flatwoods. Basically, wherever there's a bit of cover and some shade and so on, you will find corn snakes. As you can see from Red's enclosure down there, I've tried to sort of create part of a woodland scene. So I've got like the fallen branches and fallen logs and leaves and moss and stuff. And Red seems to like it, so whatever the case, I think I'm doing alright by him. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned that these snakes are not venomous and that instead they are constrictors. Now what this means is that when they're hunting their prey, they will use the head to grab it and then they'll throw the rest of the body round it in like tight coils and they'll squeeze tighter and tighter and tighter until they suffocate their prey and then they will proceed to consume it, usually from the head end. They are completely opportunistic species and will eat a wide range of prey items. Now I've got a list from a study that I found um, where it basically says what percentage um, of different prey classes corn snakes were found to eat and I'll read it out for you now. So apparently in this study, study they ate 64% mammals, 22% birds, 10% reptiles and 4% amphibians. Now as you can gather from that, this species gets about a lot and eats a lot of different things. So in captivity you don't just want to be offering them mice. As another interesting side note, I did found, find a study that I'll put the link to down in the description. I'll put like all links to all sorts of interesting things about corn snakes in the description of this video. Um, but that article was like talking about corn snakes hunting from nests of birds. Um, and in that study, they found that corn snakes in like every single situation were only found to hunt the birds at night time and they were only taking the chicks out the nest, they weren't taking the adults at any time. So that leads us on to whether this snake is nocturnal, crepuscular or diurnal. Now the fact that they hunt at night seems to suggest that they are a nocturnal species. However, this isn't strictly the case. In that study you will read that it's thought that these snakes don't actually 
just randomly slither about and find the nests at night. And what they may actually do is look out in the daytime for when the parents of the, the, like, the birds are heading to their nests, they'll find the location of them and then slither up in the nighttime to eat the chicks. This creates the impression that corn snakes are somewhat diurnal and somewhat nocturnal as well, like doing different activities at different times of the day. Now, in my experience, um, Red, well, since I've been lighting him and so on, and he's had a proper day-night cycle, um, what Red will do is he'll have some limited activity throughout the day. He'll spend the middle portion of the day sleeping, um, and then some of the earlier hours in the day, and the later hours in the day sleeping too, but in between, he'll move between hides and occasionally bask, like, completely out in the open, and then his absolute peak of activity is right after lights off and this really ties in with this species being crepuscular. In some parts of the corn snakes range it does get far too cold over the winter for them to remain active and they will enter a hibernation state. This can last from 60 to 90 days and they'll only really do it if the temperatures drop to between 10 and 16 degrees C. In other parts of the range where it doesn't get quite that cold they do reduce their activity and reduce the amount that they're going to eat but they don't go into a full deep sleep. Provided that a snake is sexually mature, so in the event of the corn snake, this is between 18 and 36 months of age, the brumation or hibernation period triggers them to want to breed. Breeding mostly occurs from March to May, um, and then the female will look for um, a nice, well-hidden, moist area to lay her eggs, like a rotten log. Um, she'll lay clutches of about 10 to 24 eggs in this position um, from late May to July and then they'll hatch 8 to 10 days later. As is the case with most snakes, corn snakes are primarily solitary animals and so when you're keeping them in captivity you don't want to keep them together because long term this could cause stress. Now on that note, the females or the males do not provide any parental care for their eggs and offspring once the eggs have been laid, they're dumped and that's it, and the young have to fend for themselves. So hopefully that paints a picture of what the corn snake is in the wild. A constricting snake that's primarily crepuscular, um, doesn't have much in the way of social interaction, but it's a very versatile animal that will um, inhabit a range of areas and take whatever moves as its food. The last question that we have to answer in this video is, how's the corn snake doing in the wild? Is it common? Is it rare? Well, for once I can actually say that this is a least concerned species according to the IUCN Red List and its population is stable. So basically, that's a big green light for this animal. We aren't making it extinct just yet. Saying that, it doesn't do too well in a couple of localised areas due to habitat loss um, and also the corn snake is actually surprisingly commonly recognised um, like as being the copperhead which is another North American snake that is actually venomous and as a result people kill it being afraid of it. Now this is just a really bad thing that people should not do because a copperhead doesn't want to waste its venom on you unfortunately, you aren't that special. It wants to save its venom um, for hunting mice and things. So killing it thinking that it's evil is just completely wrong in the first place and then corn snakes are entirely harmless. Even if a corn snake bit you, the worst thing that could happen is that one of its teeth could get pulled out, which would probably hurt the snake as well, um, and then it could get infected if it stayed in. But honestly, this is a small harmless species. It doesn't want anything to do with you. Just leave them alone. Anyway guys, I do hope that the, this video has told you a little bit more about corn snakes and how they're meant to live in the wild and therefore how we should try and keep them in captivity. As you can see, um, I try and do as much as I can for Red to get his setup more like it would be in the wild. Um, it's bioactive and so on. Um, it's reasonably large at 5 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet. It's like trying to recreate that woodland habitat that corn snakes would naturally frequent. And it is lit with UV lighting, giving him the opportunity to bask that he would of course have out in nature. Now if you did enjoy this video, which we are unfortunately reaching the end of, then do let me know down in the comment section because I love to sit read all your feedback. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and tap the notification bell and I'll be coming out with more uploads very soon. So I'll see you then. Bye guys.